In this video, we're going to cover a change event on a single cell in our worksheet in Excel VBA. So a change event will perform an action based on a cell or a range of cells being edited in your worksheet. So just to give you a preview of what we're going to build today, I have a running list of loan records. To the left here, I have some input cells. And once I input the final value in this final input cell in column E, what it will do is copy the data from this range here from A3 to E3 and paste it at the bottom of our list. So I'm gonna add a new record here. And once I hit enter, this new record will get added to the bottom of our running list. And there it is. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11. And normally I right click go to insert module, but in this case we're doing something some code here that is specific to our sheet we're currently on. So I'm going to click on that sheet, just double click, and in this first drop down menu, I'm going to select Worksheet. Now it will populate some default code. This is not the code we want. So in the second drop down menu, I'm going to go to Change and select that. And I'm going to delete this original default code that was in there. We don't need that. So this populates a change event code. And it creates a variable called target that is the data type range. And what this code does is anytime there is a change to any cell on our worksheet which is stored in this target variable it will run code now as it stands right now it won't actually show anything that's visible because we haven't told it to do any sort of action but we could so just to show you a very simple example we could insert a message box and display a message. Well, we'll, we'll reference our target variable and return the address of whatever cell was updated. So I'll just join a little message to this. So I'll add some text. So it will return the cell that was edited and then I'll add a message to it that says was changed. So now if I click in any cell and make an edit, it will be stored in that target variable. So I'll enter one here in this cell and you get a little message that says E8 was changed. I can do it again in E9 and get the same message for that cell reference. When I delete both of these at the same time, it will give me the entire range that was changed. Easy enough. So now we want to create code when our final input cell, which is cell E3, is edited that it will take this range here and copy it to the bottom of our existing loan records list. So we have an if condition we want it to be a specific cell, E3. So what we want to do here is reference our target variable again and then the address and make sure that it is equal to range E3 and reference the address again. If that is the case, then we want to do something. 
Now, one thing we need to do is have a dynamic way to get the last row in our running list because that's going to change as we add new records. So I know our first column of our running list begins in column G. So what I want to do is declare a variable called last row and set that variable equal to cells which has number inputs for the row and column index for the row input I'm gonna state rows and then count this will count every single row all the way down to the very bottom of our spreadsheet like the last row and we want column 7 because that's column G and from that last row what we want to do is end Excel up which that will always take us to the last row that contains values in column G and we want to return that row number and add one to it to get the first available blank row below that last record so now what we want to do is copy our range A3 through E3. So we're going to reference that range. Copy. And I'm going to add the rest of this code on a new line. So I'm going to hit space and then underscore. And for our destination, we want to reference the range G and we want our last row variable joined to that so we're going to use an and symbol and then reference last row and then join this to the end of our range which is column K so we need a colon in between that so we'll add a colon and then K and then join that to our last row variable again now the final thing we want to do is clear out this set of input cells to make it clear for the next input so I'm going to reference this range again and clear the contents finally we can end our if statement so I'll hit save and we'll give this a shot here so I'm gonna add a new loan record we'll add a mortgage this time and when I hit enter here this cell is our event cell so it should trigger the copy of this data to our last row and there it is so I can add a new one it always dynamically finds the last row. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.